I am known by many names, but you can call me Zorro. Guy Williams was one of the most charming, professional men I've ever had the pleasure of working with. He was a Latin gentleman with a wicked sense of humor who made women feel extremely feminine. Senor. He lit up the set when he came on it. Everybody said, hey, there's Zorro. Guy was so much like the Zorro character. It seems like from the time he was born, it was almost like the stage was set for him to be Zorro. My father worked as a model in New York before becoming an actor, and in fact, he met my mother on one of the, the shoots. Then he came out to California under contract with uh, Universal. He did a few parts that were promising, but it just wasn't really taking off. When he was at Universal International, he had a riding accident and broke his arm and dislocated his shoulder, and it took months to get over that. So he lost his contract at Universal. To rehabilitate himself, he took up fencing. While he was recovering, this call came from his agent to go audition for Zorro. There were numerous interviews for the part of Zorro, and every actor in Hollywood was in the uh, offing. And he and my mom would go and park the car up in the hill above Burbank, and they'd watch the set being built, still not knowing who was going to be Zorro. And my mom remembers him saying, I'm going to get that role. And sure enough, it was just an incredible opportunity for him, a leading man in this series. He put his whole heart and soul into it, and it shows. My dad had a great relationship with Walt. They would discuss scenes and how they would be played, and uh, Walt would give great deference to my dad's position on the role. Now, a lot of those scenes were improvised, especially Gene and my dad. When Guy was first started filming Zorro, he wasn't sure how to do the accent. Commandante, as a citizen, I wish to clear myself of all suspicion. I demand to be questioned. He was rehearsing, and uh, Walt was watching. And Guy said, I'd finish a scene, and I'd look over at Walt, and as he'd motion, you know, uh, bring it, can you bring it down a little? More? So he said I'd bring the accent down a little bit. My dear son, it is with a heavy heart that I ask you to give up your studies and come home. And I'd look over at Walt, and he'd sing it up. So he said I brought it up a little bit. When I arrived in Los Angeles, I witnessed the arrest of our neighbors on Nacho Torres. Finally, one day, Walt didn't have any signals for him, so he said, that's the accent I kept. I wish to try on the costume. Very well. Here. The costume was an interesting thing. I got, as a kid, I was fascinated with watching him in full garb. I knew it was my dad. The, the eyes were my dad's eyes, no matter how you covered them up or that smile that he had. Sometimes Walt would say that's the only way we could see him on the horse with the black outfit and the black horse. I could tell it was dad. I could tell when it was Buddy, who was stunting for my dad. At that time, stunt coordinators weren't really that well known. I'd confer with the director, and he'd say, Buddy, what do you think about uh, coming off of there, off to that ledge, and down, I'd look at it, and I'd say, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And I'd climb up there, and I'd look down, and I'd say, ah, damn, what did I get myself into? Fred Cavins, who was the fencing instructor, asked me if I'd like to learn how to fence. And I said, sure. So they started casting some of the actors who he was going to fight with about my size so that I would double the actor and fight with Guy. Doing some of the foot chases up on the roofs and things like that, the cape definitely became a problem. And sometimes I would shorten the cape up with some pins so I wouldn't step on it because I'd had that happen several times. And then you next thing it hit the ground would be your head. When you had to do your horse thing and do a transfer to another wagon or bulldog a guy off a horse, you had to be very careful about it because I'd hung up on that cape a few times and then you'd have a wreck. More people were hurt and maimed around horses and wagons in the business than any other individual thing. We were lucky. They used to film all of the, the high action scenes on Fridays so that if there had been an injury, they'd have the weekend to recover. And... A lot of times, the guy might do a stunt himself, but uh, if it was jumping over the balcony and going down eight or nine feet, 
they'd do a close-up of starting or something, and then I'd go do it, and they'd cut it in. I was expendable. He wasn't. Buddy and my dad would practice the fencing routines on the front lawn at the house. Janice was a great cook, and so I always had a free lunch up there. When fans would approach my dad, he'd lit up a little bit when he did the Zorro parades at Disneyland. Talk about fun. And they'd put us up at the Disneyland Hotel and then put a show on. We had a lot of fun with those because they always gave us carte blanche at the hotel, so we used every bit of it we could with the food and drink. My dad was a sailor. He always wanted to sail around the world. That was his big dream. So um, after Zorro allowed it to occur, acquired a 45-foot catch, and it became sort of the social weekend center for the cast members or you know, directors, and, and that was his love. Guy got this unexpected call in 1973 from Buenos Aires. My dad was invited down to Argentina to do a benefit for a children's hospital. The streets were lined all the way from the airplane to the hotel with fans waving and screaming. He was a superstar down there. They had been watching Zorro since 1968. He spent uh, a good amount of his final years in Argentina. He loved it down there. It was very European, and uh, the people loved him, and he was Zorro again. Toward the end, he started to get homesick, and he was looking to come home. Unfortunately, he passed away before uh, he realized that. Guy Williams died in, uh, at the end of April in 1989. He was only 65. The whole city was just mourning. They had a beautiful funeral for him there, but eventually his ashes were spread over the Pacific around Malibu, which uh, he loved that ocean. A lot of fans all say the same thing. Your dad was the best, the quintessential Zorro. That was his personality, his wit, his intelligence. It just shone through the character. He enjoyed that role so much and carrying the ethics and moral of that character into real life for people. I think everybody who watched him felt like they knew him. Uh, the people who watched Lost in Space thought of him as a father figure. And when they watched Zorro, they felt there was somebody who could protect them. He gave the world so much with that role. Adios, muchachos.